there. Thanks for listening to Let's Talk Withdrawal, a weekly discussion on antidepressants and the issues surrounding them. Hello and welcome to episode 13 of Let's Talk Withdrawal, a weekly podcast discussing antidepressants and mental health. A little later on, I'll be going through some of your feedback. Thank you so much for getting in touch and please keep your messages coming. I'd love to hear from you. But first, this week we have an interview with Susie. Susie lives in mainland Europe and she shares her powerful story of stopping her antidepressant cold turkey after two years of taking it. Now, I must mention before we start that stopping an antidepressant suddenly is not recommended and you should always seek medical advice before stopping a psychoactive prescription drug. Susie, thank you so much for talking to us today. Can I start by asking you to tell us a little about your background? Yes, my depression is only circumstantial. It depends on my living condition, so I think I'm very blessed in that. Um, Now, in this case, I have... I have ME for 30 years, but it was under control. And I came to live in this apartment where I'm now living nine years ago. And the person in the apartment has serious psychiatric problems. And I found her completely abandoned. And because I'm completely a uh, total carer, I threw myself into looking for her with absolutely no help, support or respite. We didn't even have a psychiatrist helping and her family, nobody. So I basically ran myself completely into the ground. And I would say that the depression came on through that incredible stress, loneliness, because I live in a city that's quite cold. I suppose big cities maybe are and homesickness. And can you tell us how you came to be on an antidepressant? Well, I uh, realised that I had depression and I tried to fight the first three winters. The winters were always the worst uh, without anything. And then I found myself with my head lying on the table every evening from about five o'clock and waiting for seven for what I thought was a reasonable time to go to bed. And I knew this was total classic depression. And I knew a doctor, he's a student, and because when you're depressed and you're in another country with a foreign language, you feel vulnerable, I contacted him and met him for a coffee and he immediately prescribed an antidepressant. How did you feel about being prescribed an antidepressant? Did you know much about it before you took it or were you just going on his recommendation? I had experience with a wonderful antidepressant in Ireland but I couldn't remember the name of it. And when he suggested this new one, it had so much bad press that I objected, even though I was so depressed. And when you're depressed, you have no fight in you. And he said, oh, no, 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 it's perfectly fine. Besides side effects, did your doctor talk to you about trying to stop? Nothing, nothing about going on. He laughed at me if I had a side effect. He actually told me to throw the paper with the side effects into the bin. That was his reaction, laughing and throw it in the bin. And what kind of side effects did you find the most troubling? Well, James, you know, because I have ME as well, this is the problem. I confused the two. And I'm now discovering that I had appalling side effects and I'm discovering new side effects every day. Because, uh, first of all, I'm a totally different person since I stopped two months ago. I became violent and I didn't for one minute connect it with the tablet. I thought it was the situation I was in. And I never, well, I did question, you've never been violent before. What is this? Anger, appalling anger. Um, But the worst thing is paralysis, actual paralysis. Yeah, from the beginning. And again, because of ME, having so many symptoms, I thought, oh, no, it's just an ME symptom. And I have actually lost up to three years of my life with paralysis caused by this medication. I would have to lie in bed and through the hot, humid summers, I spent the entire summer with the windows closed in bed. And I would have to wait until 4 p.m. every day for my a flatmate to come in and take basically lift me out of bed because I couldn't move my legs. So I couldn't go to the toilet, have breakfast or lunch on her four o'clock. It's incredible. That's only one side effect. And Susie, how long were you taking your antidepressant for? Uh, I think it was two years. 
Two years is a long time to build up dependence and then try and stop. What was it that made you decide to stop? So what happened to cause the crisis and why I stopped cold turkey, because I had no choice, was half of my body became paralyzed one night. Half of my body. I was terrified. And I discovered it was the, the medication. And I stopped immediately. And do you know that my right arm has still not recovered full power? And that through the whole nightmare of the withdrawal, my arm was totally paralyzed, my right arm, for the first few weeks. Susie, that sounds awful. It's such a shocking story. I can't believe I'm, that it's me I'm talking about. It's, it's like a movie. I, I was in so much shock, and I'm not easily shocked, when I discovered that the paralysis was caused by the tablet. I was stunned. I can understand that. What a frightening thing on top of the other side effects. Did you have any other support during the time that you were trying to withdraw? None, zero, because you cannot expect your doctor to explain those things. In my experience, he didn't. Then there's the other horrible thing, that when you're going through withdrawal, the doctors don't understand anything. And I was even misdiagnosed going through the withdrawal. I had three doctors come to the house at night in the same week. I was so bad with vomiting and diarrhoea, and they diagnosed food poisoning because they didn't listen to me. I have to say, the thing I was concerned about during the withdrawal more than anything was my heart, because that was racing, and I thought, You're, that's definitely at risk. I just think you have to come off it. You have to come off it. And how is your recovery progressing? Are you hopeful of getting back to where you were before? Oh, totally. I'm recovering so fast. Um, even in the last... I've, it's really accelerated the improvement in the last week. I'm still left with what I consider superficial things because I have my mind back. For me, that's everything. And I have my personality back. Um, My normal, enthusiastic personality, which was completely gone and was frightening during the withdrawal. I mean, it was a strange depression that the withdrawal brought on. A complete... It wasn't even apathy. It was worse than apathy. It's really heartening to hear that you've come through what really must have been an awful time. And Susie, if you had a friend who was considering taking an antidepressant and they came to you for advice, what would you say to them? Well, James, as I said to you in an email, I can't believe I'm saying this, but because depression is so appalling, but I would say don't. Fight it in a natural way, which is what I'm doing now. Go out, be social, get as much daylight as you can, surround yourself with things you enjoy, do things that help you. The thing is that when you're depressed, you don't think of these things. And you need somebody, you need somebody beside you to point you in the right direction, which is what I'm doing now with other people. Because I'm just saying, even with the withdrawals, I found myself drowning in the withdrawal symptoms. And I realized that I wasn't improving. I'd reached a plateau and it was quite frightening. And I thought, this is now not improving. So you have to fight, even if you're exhausted, you have to get out of the house and start doing things. And you know, it's amazing how your mind responds once you start doing proactive things. Susie, I'm really glad the future looks much brighter for you. And although it was an incredibly tough time, I think stopping sounds like the best thing you ever did. Was there anything else that you'd like to let people know? No, except that if they are going to take an an antidepressant, that they should study and investigate thoroughly the side effects and go in prepared. You're right, there's a lot of education of medical professionals needed about what can happen when people try to withdraw from medications they're dependent on. It was hell. I I have to warn you. I do think you need people. You need at least somebody to feed you, you know, basic things like that. And be prepared for a roller coaster of emotions. I, I seriously, even a week ago, I didn't know if I'd ever see my happiness again. Only a week ago. Can you believe it, James? And look at me now. Look how fast I got over it. 50 grams for two years. And now, in two months, I'm completely normal. I'm happy now. I'm healthy now. And as you say, I'm like you. I'm trying to help other people. So, yeah, I'm just so fortunate. I'm, I'm free. Susie, thanks so much for sharing your story with us. You've been brilliant. I'm sure you'll agree it was inspirational to hear how Susie took on her withdrawal and how brave she was in coming forward to share her story with us. Feedback. Feedback. Thank you so much for getting in touch and giving me your feedback. It's great to know that you're finding this podcast interesting and informative. I just wanted to share this review that was left from a listener in the USA. 
This podcast is giving out some incredibly important information. If you are prescribed an antidepressant, you need to do your research before taking it. If you are on one and don't wish to be on any longer, this is a great resource for finding out how to stop. This is information that drug companies don't want you to have and that doctors themselves are for the most part unaware of. If you're in the midst of withdrawals from psychiatric medications, please have a listen. If you have a family member or loved one going through this, listen. If you're a doctor, listen. It is well done and has interviews with experts and people who are passionate about spreading awareness about the dangers and truth about psychiatric medication. Well, thank you so much for this and to anyone that's left a review so far. I'm really keen for as many as possible to discover this podcast in iTunes and reviews really help that. If you're listening in iTunes now, please leave a review. It takes just a couple of minutes, but it makes a big difference. Thank you. Please do not increase, decrease or stop your psychoactive prescription medication without the advice and support of a medical or mental health professional. Thank you so much for listening and please come back next week for another episode. Until next time, take care. Thank you so much for listening to Let's Talk Withdrawal. Come back next week for more news and views. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review and subscribe in iTunes.